So now in this video, we're going to make a prototype DC to DC boost converter. Um, this relies on many of the basic principles of a good boost converter, but it's much simpler and uh, not, not a terribly good one. There's uh, boost converter modules. Uh, many of them only cost like a dollar, and even those are far superior to this. Just buy a module if you actually need one, but this is still a good circuit for learning. So in any case, uh, let's follow the path here. So we got uh, positive 5 volts and uh, two resistors in uh, parallel because the more current the more effective this will be um, so two of them in parallel that's like a 110 ohm uh, resistor you get twice the current um, but the resistors don't get any hotter because there's two of them each one of them is passing the current independently so in any case uh, 10 millihenry uh, inductor and first thing it's going to do is charge the capacitor up to 4.5 volts approximately because we got the 5 volts and then the diode there is a uh, forward uh, biased and at very low currents, it uh, stops conducting at like 0.5 volts away from the supply voltage. So in any case, the capacitor will charge. That's the main thing. And then when we close the switch, nothing will happen with the capacitor because the diode is uh, reverse bias at that point. Because you can see ground there, um, no current's going to flow through uh, to there. So it, whatever voltage that is, it's trapped there. Current's going to flow through the inductor though based on how much resistance the resistors have. And there's a little bit of resistance with the inductor. But in any case, current's gonna flow. And uh, when we open the switch, inductors have the basic property of they keep passing current even if you cut off the supply voltage. Now that's only as long as they're stored uh, magnetic charge. They have a magnetic field that collapses, keeps pushing the current. So that's gonna push that into the capacitor. Whenever you push more current into a capacitor, its voltage rises. Lower capacitors uh, rise faster in voltage, so we're only going to use a 4.7 microfarad capacitor in this video. And uh, I don't think I was getting all the current out of it that I could when I uh, set this up. Um, so one of the things I think the power supply, when you ask for sudden uh, current surges, it kind of falls short. So I got a capacitor here, 470 microfarad, to help uh, fill in the current during those periods of times, and I upped how much current the uh, the uh, power supply will uh, provide. So uh, I haven't actually done this since I did that. We'll see how that turns out. And so I uh, hooked up the uh, pocket oscilloscope. Uh, one reason why I use this, it's uh, easier to set up for one thing, but also it has less impedance. It will drain the capacitor faster than my better oscilloscope. And uh, that's kind of a good thing for this video because as you can see, you have to raise the voltage while it's providing power. That's what an actual boost converter is going to be doing. It's going to be powering other circuit circuitry, and you need to maintain the voltage. But there you can see that uh, we got a 5 volt power supply. We're getting the capacitor above 8 volts. Now the capacitor has a limit of 50 volts. You got to make sure uh, you monitor it and you don't exceed uh, that voltage. That's one of the things a boost converter module is going to do for you. All you got to do is plug in your uh, main power supply of a lower voltage and your circuitry that needs a higher voltage and it does the rest uh, pretty reliably but again this is a good uh, learning circuit so i hope you enjoyed